Evaporative condensers are the most common type of condenser employed in industrial refrigeration systems. By utilizing a combination of air and water, evaporative condensers can efficiently reject heat to the atmosphere. This category of condenser integrates the principles of evaporative cooling and therefore condenses the superheated vapor from the compressor more efficiently than traditional air-cooled or water-cooled condensers. By leveraging the latent heat of vaporization of water, evaporative condensers can achieve effective heat rejection with lower energy and water consumption compared to standalone water-cooled systems. Every evaporative condenser has the following key components. Each condenser will have at least one inlet connection to receive superheated vapor and one outlet connection where liquid exits the condenser. The refrigerant flows through a series of heat exchange coils made of durable materials like galvanized or stainless steel. These coils provide the necessary surface area for effective heat transfer. Water is sprayed or distributed over the exterior of the heat exchange coils. This water enhances heat transfer and facilitates evaporative cooling. Fans move ambient air across the coils and sprayed water, accelerating the evaporation process and carrying away heat from the refrigerant. Located near the air outlets, the mist eliminators minimize water loss by capturing water droplets from the airstream, reducing drift and conserving water. A pump circulates water from the basin to the spray nozzles, ensuring continuous wetting of the heat exchange coils. A collection basin or sump at the base of the condenser holds the recirculating water. The sump is configured with a ball float valve to provide makeup water to replace what was lost by evaporation. Evaporative condensers receive high temperature superheated vapor from the compressor. The refrigerant cycles through the coils as water is sprayed over the coil surface and fans move air across the wetted coil surface. This process causes a portion of the water to evaporate, taking away heat from the refrigerant. This evaporation significantly enhances the cooling process by utilizing water's latent heat of vaporization. As heat is removed, the refrigerant condenses into a high pressure liquid which exits the condenser and can be supplied to a receiver or expansion device for further use in the system. The remaining water, cooled by air, collects back into the basin where it is recirculated by the pump. All right, in this video, I just wanna give an overview of a force draft evaporative condenser at a small uh, plant here. It has a single condenser with a single circuit, so it's easy to see all the various parts. So it's a good, good opportunity. Um, and we're looking at the end of the condenser that has the refrigerant piping con connections. This is an ammonia condenser, and we have a high pressure vapor entering the condenser at the top there where it's labeled inlet. Inside the condenser, if we were to go inside of it, we would see the whole bank of tubes where refrigerant is being uh, circuited back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until eventually it exits, exits here on the pipe labeled condenser drain or CD, okay, as a, as a saturated liquid, at least theoretically that would be, and this would drain then into the, into the high pressure receiver. So really just in this condenser, just two, con just two connections. Larger condensers may have multiple connections, it could be uh, two circuits. It could be two circuits on both sides for connections, but, but it'd be similar, similar arrangement to this. Um, every evaporative condenser will have a pump, at least one. This pump is drawing water from the basin, which is right inside this uh, manway, pumping up to the top of the condenser where there's spray nozzles uh, distributing water over the coil containing the uh, ammonia refrigerant. And it's that process of spraying water and also moving air over the coil that um, allows us to so effectively reject the heat gained in the evaporators and also in the compressors to the atmosphere, which is the whole purpose of the condenser. Okay, really like the location of the isolation valve here. This is nice. I'm standing on a platform, so it's safe. And if this needs to be worked on, it's easy. It's easy to do. On the outlet, it's important that there be a, a service valve or a purge valve available. This is really important for uh, removing non-condensable gases that may accumulate over time. Sometimes that will be connected directly to a solenoid valve that goes to an auto purger. In this case, the small system. Um, to, it, it would just be used for manually purging wh whenever necessary. Um, I'm gonna walk along this way and just point out um, now this, uh, here's the fans for the condenser. Thankfully they're not running right now because the system is off, but this condenser has four fans um, that could operate if, if needed, okay? Um, these fans are pulling air into the condenser, which is then discharging up out of the top. So we call this a forced draft 
condenser because we're forcing air through the coil out through the top. Okay, and speaking of the top, if we were to climb up there and there is a good access ladder that we'll see in a second, um, there would be what we call uh, mist or drift eliminators on the top there. And that's to prevent the water that I already talked about spraying over the coil from splashing out of the condenser, creating a mess. So th those are helpful to that extent. But that's where the air leaves uh, the condenser is through those mist or drift eliminators. All right, let's walk around to the other side. Just point out a few other, few other aspects of the condenser. Um, excellent access up to those eliminators. So if we need to go up there, we can climb with a ladder in a cage. That's really nice. You don't always see that. Sometimes you have to get a lift or an extension ladder. And then just this equipment, not to go into detail about it, but because the evaporative condenser has water, it's important that water be treated to prevent scale buildup, biological growth, corrosion, etc. And so this, uh, this controller, as well as this PVC piping, and some of these chemicals that you see here are all part of that. So that's, a, that's an overview of an evaporative condenser that I trust you find useful. Evaporative condensers have many advantages over water-cooled and air-cooled condensers. First, using a combination of air and water cooling produces the most efficient heat rejection. Second, evaporative condensers require less fan power compared to air-cooled condensers, resulting in lower energy consumption. Third, evaporative condensers are smaller than traditional air-cooled condensers for the same capacity, saving valuable space. Unfortunately, these advantages of using evaporative condensers are accompanied by some trade-offs. First, the water used must be treated to prevent scaling, fouling, and microbial growth, which requires ongoing oversight and additional cost. Second, although minimalized with mist eliminators, evaporative condensers experience some water loss through evaporation and drift. Third, evaporative condensers are typically more expensive to install than air-cooled condensers due to their complexity and additional components. Finally, the water distribution system, pump, and basin require periodic cleaning and maintenance to prevent clogging and ensure proper operation. One way that evaporative condensers are categorized is by, by whether they're forced draft or induced draft. Okay, in a forced draft condenser, we are pushing air through the coil. So I've drawn this simple diagram here and you can see the fans uh, below and it's pushing air through our coil, which is drawn in orange. Uh, whereas in an induced draft condenser, the fans at the top, and instead of pushing air, it's pulling or drawing the air through the unit. So the air comes in the bottom and is drawn up through the top. Now there's some noteworthy differences between the two types, so it's good to be familiar with them. So in a force draft, you'll see most often axial fans. An axial fan is kind of a propeller type fan. Think of a ceiling fan, that's an axial fan. But you may also see a centrifugal fan. Um, the centrifugal fan that I've kind of drawn here as a, as a simple sketch is sometimes called a squirrel cage fan because that's what it looks like. They're not used too much in more on force draft condensers, but if you get an older unit, you will see a centrifugal fan. And there's pros and cons between these two types of fans, okay? An axial fan, the downside is it's a bit noisier. If it's an industrial, um, an industrial situation, the noise level probably isn't that big of a deal. Um, hence, the reason axial fans get employed because they're a lot easier to work on. Um, the horsepower requirement for an axial fan is less though compared to a centrifugal fan. And this is a big driver. We like to use less energy, all other things being equal. All right. Um, and as I already said, it's more common nowadays to see axial fans. Um, centrifugal fans, however, do have one advantage that's worth pointing out, which is that they can generate more static pressure. So while this isn't the most common um, design constraint, if there's a situation where the condenser um, air discharge needs to be ducted and there's going to be um, you know static pressure that needs to be overcome centrifugal fan becomes a really good option for that but because they cost more money to operate and they're harder to work on because you have to pull that squirrel cage out um, through the end of the condenser they're not commonly employed anymore now an induced draft condenser um, has offered some advantages, and of course, there's no um, perfect solutions, only trade-offs, but it does have some advantages over the force draft counterpart. Um, I already mentioned it pulls air through, um, and the, the good thing about this is that the noise is a little bit less for the same horsepower requirement. So um, if sound is a big constraint for whatever the reason might be, neighbor's gonna complain, an induced draft 
condenser might be a better choice. Also, uh, another advantage is because we're pulling air through the unit this way, we create a slight negative pressure inside the housing of the condenser. And that negative pressure will mean we have a, a little less likelihood of seeing water leaks out of the housing, which can be kind of common in a condenser. So that's, a, that's another advantage. Um, downside or just a, a constraint or something to be aware of with an induced draft is because the fan is at the top where the water is, um, you know, it's being pumped through and sprayed over the tube bundle, the fan and its motor are inside the housing in an atmosphere that's very wet, very moist. So care needs to be taken that when selecting the fan and its motor that it's compatible for that wet atmosphere. So that's a broad overview of the two categories of evaporative condenser. An adiabatic condenser is a hybrid condenser that combines features of both air-cooled and evaporative condensers. When ambient temperatures are low, adiabatic condensers can operate in dry mode, where all heat exchange is accomplished through air movement without the assistance of water. When ambient temperatures rise, the condenser will adjust to adiabatic mode, where a water distribution system weds adiabatic pads, causing air drawn through them to cool via evaporation. The pre-cooled air then passes over the coils, enhancing the condenser's cooling capacity and maintaining efficient refrigerant condensation even in high temperature environments.